So we have four plus one more lectures to go and after that what four plus one the fifth one I will figure if I need it if I need it then I will uh, give that lecture ok. Great day today, yeah. So hot outside, so hot outside. You would have uh, had your lunch now. You are here in L7, and it so happens that uh, what should I say? So, you have had your lunch, it is a hot day outside. You are here in L7, it is all chilled out here air conditioned out here in front of you are a bunch of TA 101 slides which I am going to be you know going through ideal ideal situation for you to doze off is not it is not it is that the reason why you are here all right you know I would not blame you if I were you I would probably do the same so I will try my level best to keep you awake all right. So, let me get started uh, this is about 10 minutes past 2 almost uh, new topic interpenetration of solids as I said we are going to be covering 4 plus 1 lectures more the fifth lecture is going to be very interesting all right already the fifth lecture if I get a chance to take it is going to be very interesting it is got nothing to do with engineering drawing, but a lot to do with what you are going to be doing later on in your lives if I get a chance to take it that is anyhow. So, last time I ended up by posing this question to you. So, given three points is it possible for us to draw a hyperbola is it is it yes or no yes who says yes given three points is it possible for us to draw a hyperbola that passes through these points ok. So, if those who say yes want to think a little further generic equation of a conic six constants six constants how many conditions you have three you think it is possible still I would not know let us see how do you get a hyperbola how do you get a hyperbola you have a cone well. So, I am not really sure if uh, I would be needing additional conditions to uh, have a hyperbola pass through these points, but let us investigate further. So, if you think about how we get a hyperbola this is um, how we do that. Uh, so, we have a cone and if we have a vertical plane need not be vertical if you have a plane that intersects with the cone cuts it out then the intersection between the cone and this plane the red plane is going to be a hyperbola right. So, this plane can be vertical it can be parallel to the axis of the cone or it could be slant what could it not be it should not be passing through the if I have this situation what do I get we get a parabola otherwise we get a hyperbola right all right. So, this situation so we have a cone we have a plane that cuts the cone and imagine that these three points they happen to be a result of this process ok. So, the first point over here is obviously the intersection between the cone and the plane to get these two points ok we draw the base of the cone we project 
this intersection point down over here we measure this distance and if we rotate this cone by 90 degrees these two points are going to be lying away from the axis of the cone by the same distance on both sides right right now if you have this so to speak additional information that you have a cone you have a plane and you have three points which are a result of the intersection between the cone and the plane in red it is possible for you to draw or construct a hyperbola and this is how it could be done so construct first a rectangle the length of the rectangle is the distance between these two points the width of the rectangle is essentially the height that this point lies above the base of the cone okay the right vertical edge divide that edge into equal number of parts the bottom right edge of the rectangle divide that also into the same number of parts of equal length segments now this is what is important from this point first you number these points from the top of the rectangle to the bottom of the rectangle and from the center or the axis of the cone up till the end of the rectangle ok. So, the sequence is important top to bottom on the vertical side and left to right or center to right uh, in the in the or on the horizontal ok and from this point start drawing line segments that join this point to all these guys 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 ok. What you do about these points you start from the apex of the cone. So, from the apex of the cone join this point now the point of intersection between this line and this line would give you a point on the hyperbola likewise the point of intersection between this line and this one here would give you a second point intersection between this and this would give you a third point and so on ok. So, once you have the intersection points the points that lie on a hyperbola join these points and you will get a hyperbola ok. All right. Now, this is only possible if these three points they happen to be such that you can extract the information about the cone and the plane that is cutting the cone ok. Let me ask you an inverse problem of course, this uh, hyperbola is symmetric. So, you would see the other side as well. All right. So, do you think the additional information is required in terms of uh, the cone and the plane that is cutting the cone in addition to these three points do you think that. So, if I give you three points and if I give you nothing else is it still possible for you to draw a hyperbola or if I give you these three points in such a way that you know the information about the cone and the plane that is cutting the cone is available to you you would be able to draw uh, this hyperbola. Yeah, this is what my second so to speak inverse question is. Now, given these three points, is it possible for you to find a unique set of a cone and the cutting plane? In other words, is it possible for you to figure if the information about the cone and this cutting plane is implicit within these three points? that is the inverse problem and think about that think about that because you know last time a bunch of you guys came to the board you know took the mic and uh, started describing different techniques to uh, construct a parabola given these C points. So, I thought maybe it was possible yeah so think about that all right. <coughs> so, for today's lecture I am going to be using a special pointer ok. So, this is my teacup ok and this is my pointer and uh, the point that I am trying to drive through is 
interpenetration of solids. This is the first example that we are going to be doing. So, imagine that this is a cone, imagine that this is a cylinder, okay, and imagine that you have put through the cylinder, I mean, put the cylinder through a cone, okay. So, of course, you would have made some cuts okay, on this side of the cone and on this side of the cone. The problem is very simple figure out these cuts, what the shape is. Okay. Um, an extension of this is what you are going to be possibly doing in TA 201 when you are working with sheet metal. So, a cone is a developable surface, right? Is it? Yes or no? So, it is cylinder. So, you can actually cut the cone out and spread it out on a plane. How is that going to look like? It is going to look like a big sector. No? What? It is going to look like a big sector likewise a, um, a cylinder for example, you can cut it out and lay it out on a plane and it is going to look like a rectangle. So, first things first given the positions of the cone and the cylinder depicted by these three views in it does not really matter first angle or third angle you know cone cylinder here cone cylinder here cone cylinder here figure out the intersection curves or in a single word interpenetration between the two solids. Okay. A question that you might want to ask yourself where or which view would you possibly use to figure out where the intersection points would lie. In other words let, let me rephrase this question. So, which view will tell you the best or which view will give you the best information about the intersection points between the cone and the cylinder would it be the top view would it be the front view or would it be the side view side view wonderful ok where would the intersection points lie huh? where would the intersection points lie so you say side view all right but where would the intersection points lie. Huh? Would I be correct if I say that the intersection points are going to be lying on this circle right. Now, the second question is how do I how do I extract these intersection points, how do I extract these intersection points. I will have to do something to represent my cone right. I will have to do something to represent specifically the slant surface of the cone ok. To do that this is what I would do, I would divide the base of the cone in the top view into equal number of parts ok and this is where things become very very important, this is where labeling becomes very important. So, you need to be very careful when you are labeling because if you are not then you will mess things up. I number these points anti clockwise 1 to 12 ok. Once again I divide the base of the cone into let us say 12 equal parts could be 15 could be 9 could be 10 whatever they have to be equal right they need not be equal as well. Now, once I do that I start taking projections of these points on the base of the cone onto the front view ok. Be very attentive be very careful and then I start labeling the points on the base of the cone. Now, which is this point great how about this point wonderful 2 6 great what 1 7 next 8 12 next 9 11 next 10 
all right now I'll do the same exercise I'll represent these points over here onto this base of the coin the profile view and for that I'm going to be using this 45 degree line so essentially I'm going to be taking these projections you know and transferring them onto the profile view the reason why I said the numbering is going to be very important is because here you would know that the numbering will change of course so when I do that I'm going to be joining the apex of this cone to all these points on the base of the cone ok same thing now what would this point be great huh? 8 and 6 next 5 and 9 next 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 last great now what you have noticed is two things one that is going to be very easy for you to extract the points of intersection from the profile view the points of intersection are going to be lying on the circle and once you have these what I call generators or select lines they essentially represent what the slant surface of the cone right your intersection points are going to be the intersection between the slant surface of the cone and the circle he is a little late but that is ok all right so your intersection points are going to be the intersection between these lines which represent the slant surface of the cone and of course the circle ok all right your first point of intersection will be here ok what is this point intersection between which line on the cone on the surface of the cone 4 and 10 yeah and the circle project that on to call it point A project that on to the front view ok now in the front view how would this show up how would this show up in the front view it would be on what slant lines 4 and 10 where is 4 here where is 10 there so point A is going to be on these two lines in the front view right right ok so of course uh, in fact his timing was just perfect so imagine that this is a cylinder imagine that this is a cone ok and this is how you are actually seeing the interaction between the cone and the cylinder like so ok there would be a point of intersection here and there would be a point of intersection here right there. So what I would do is I would keep this on the chair in front of you so that while I am working with the slide you can imagine how the intersection is going to shape up. Maybe I could use the table better. All right. Now the other two intersection points are going to be here and here. Okay. So point B would lie on the slant line five nine. So go on to the front view. Five is here. 9 is here and it is at this height so you will have point B here and correspondingly point B there ok. Likewise there would be another intersection point on the other side ok. So let me call this point L, L will be at the same height from the base of the cone ok and L is also going to be lying on 311 so 311 is here and here ok. 
So be very careful where the intersection points are going to be lying because tracking that is very very important. Okay? Once you understand this, third intersection point on the circle lies on leader 6 8 project that call it C project that onto the front view okay identify where leader 6 is or where generator 6 is here mark that where generator 8 is mark that okay there would be an intersection point on the other side of the cone call it K and K would essentially be lying on the same generators here and here in the top view okay now this is so in the in the third angle projection this is what the profile view right so if you turn it by 90 degrees this way this part is something that's going to be facing you here okay so this part is something which is going to be facing you this part is going to be behind you so understand that okay so this these two intersection points they are facing you and correspondingly the other two intersection points are behind the cone okay so understand that rest is a little mechanical so dj they lie on 6 8 project that identify 6 and 8 okay e and i they would lie on 5 and 9 3 and 11 5 and 9 would be here 3 and 11 would be here and eventually the last point g that will be lying on slant line 4 and slant line 10 okay all right so your pretty much your intersection profile pretty much as mic went off no your intersection profile pretty much is uh, done in the front view okay join these points and this is how your intersection profile will show up okay all right so once you have drawn these curves transfer these points onto the top view once again be very very careful these points they have to lie on specific slant lines on the cone or generated lines on the cone okay for example this one where would this lie four great this one would lie again on 10 okay and these are points a how about this one huh? 3 and 5 careful how about this one one would be on 5 the other one would be on 3 okay likewise this one would be on 9 and 11 so 9 here and if you project them upwards okay so labeling is important B would be on 5 and 9 respectively and L will be on 3 and 11 respectively okay project this point where would that be huh so think about this so this point this point they actually represent two points C and K right so this point would lie on 2 and 6 let's see where it is 6 all right and if you go on to the profile view point c lies on 6 right and k would lie on 12 right no k would lie on 2 yeah okay Likewise, from the right, these points would lie on leaders or generators 8 and 12 and so on and so forth. Okay? So keep projecting, be very careful, 
those insertion points they have to lie on specific slant lines. Okay. I'll go a little slow so that you can follow. And labeling is very important. So if you mess up the labeling, then you are going to be messing up the entire procedure. So labeling is very important. <coughs> all right, so it looks like you have all the intersection points in the top view. Now, let's look at the profile view now. <coughs> Now, if you are looking at the top of this assembly of uh, the cone and the cylinder, which points are visible to you? Which of these points are visible to you? The points above the, yeah, so these points, all the points above this axis, this horizontal axis of the cylinder, they are going to be visible. All the points below this axis, they will be invisible, right? So this part will be visible A, B, C, D okay, on both sides and this part will be invisible or hidden. Okay. All right. Now if you want to figure the rest of the visibility of uh, the cone cylinder this is how it is going to be. So this part of the cylinder is visible of course, this part is visible, this part is inside the cone so it is hidden of course these vertical edges or these vertical circles are visible, visible visible this part is invisible again because it is inside the cone okay. and this part of the cone is visible. Okay. Now notice that I have not shown these edges using hidden lines, why is that? Why is that? They have to be removed so that <coughs> the cylinder is accommodated within the cone. Okay. Likewise the same thing, top view, this part is visible, this part is visible of the cylinder, this is inside the cone so therefore it is hidden visible 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 this part is inside the cone again so it is hidden this part of the base of the cone is visible this part is below the <coughs> cylinder so hidden visible and hidden. Okay. Now notice what is happening here and likewise what is happening there. the state of the line is changing right. So, the cylinder is visible up till this point and then it is going inside the cone okay. and then it is coming out of the cone and it is visible again and this is happening where at the junction of course where the cone and the cylinder are interacting right at this intersection point. Okay. Just to double check. So, this is called the select line method or a generator method. So, once again, to summarize, start by looking at the three views carefully, start by observing the three views carefully. Number one, number two, figure out which view will give you the best information about the intersection points most direct information about the intersection points in this case it was the profile view. So, once you have figured that thing out okay, in this case represent the surface of the cone using these generator lines. So, they are essentially the slant surface of the cone they would represent the slant surface of the cone and of course, the points of intersection would be between this circle in this example and these slant lines. Once you get the points of intersection label these points very carefully they have to lie on you know certain lines okay once you label them carefully transfer them onto the front view and the top view straightforward okay 
the same example using a slightly different method and uh, that is the method that I am not quite sure if you guys are still comfortable with the cutting plane method you you guys probably didn't do very well with the quiz with the cutting plane method all right so here it goes I will go a little quick with this. <coughs> so, the idea is very simple. So, you have the assembly. So, you have the assembly of the cylinder and the cone, ok. Just slice it using a bunch of parallel planes, ok. Slice it using a bunch of parallel planes. Now, if you slice the cone with the plane parallel to the base of it, what do you get? a circle and if you slice a cylinder with the same plane what do you get a rectangle. So, your intersection points will be what your intersection points will be essentially the intersection between the corresponding rectangles and the circles this is what the basic idea is ok ok. So, you have this view for example, slice it with a bunch of horizontal planes, the green planes are those cutting planes, number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 from top to bottom ok. Now, these planes are going to be intersecting the cone in certain at certain heights, project these guys up in the top view the intersection between the plane and the cone will appear as a as a what? You guys are dozing off as a what? Great. So, each plane will intersect the cone at a circle, sketch those circles in the top view. Okay. And of course, do not forget to name or number those circles. So, from inside to outside they are numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 ok. Now, from the profile view from the profile view you know that these planes are also cutting the cylinder ok. So, you would have this intersection point these two intersection points you know and so on and so forth. So, this portion over here will essentially be a rectangle ok project this rectangle onto the top view for each and every plane each and every cutting plane ok. All right. ok. So, this point here will essentially be a line a rectangle with no area this would be rectangle B B rectangle C C rectangle D D and finally, rectangle E E ok. And remember that the same rectangles will be below the axis as well ok. So, once you have identified or named those rectangles name them in the top view. So, A would be a line B B would be this one C C would be this one D D would be this one and E E would be essentially the rectangle corresponding to this plane here ok. Now, your first point of intersection is going to be between some circle and some rectangle can you give me that circle 1 and rectangle A first point second point is between 2 and B B how many points do you expect 2 one at the bottom the other one at the top third one is between circle C and rectangle C C or circle 3 and rectangle C C ok one at the bottom the other one at the top fourth one is in between 4 and D D ok bottom and top and fifth one is of course, in between 
uh, circle number 5 which is here passing through the axis of the cylinder and this rectangle here ok and do not do not stop here keep going down ok. So, this one is in between let us say D D or maybe C C right rectangle C C and circle what circle what 6 ok next one B B and 7 is it B B and 7 no it was C and 7 ok this guy here and this guy here C and 7. So, B B and 8 ok and of course, eventually a single point here A and plane number 9 ok. This guy is symmetric once again it is going to be these intersection points above the axis they are going to be visible the intersection points below they will be hidden they will be invisible ok. So, this is solid and this part is uh, hidden ok. So, the intersection is symmetric mirror image all right and drop the corresponding intersection points down onto the front view. Where would you want to drop this to which plane which plane. So, here you have plane information here. So, which plane huh? plane number what plane number 9 these two guys here which plane where do the lie where do these uh, points lie on which plane do they lie what plane number 8 great <coughs> these guys plane number 7 plane number 6 keep working backwards eventually up to plane number 1 and of course, you have this intersection point well this intersection is again symmetric. So, get the mirror image get this intersection point or intersection curve. right. So, do you expect the two methods to give you the same result do you expect the two methods to give you the same result compare now you have done AutoCAD um, if you do 3D modeling in AutoCAD um, take the cone the same size take the cylinder the same size performance section ok get the cylinder into the cone performance section and if you try to compare that with what we have they are identical yeah All right. So, why is this exercise important? Why is this exercise important? Take a look at this example. Okay. Now, what I had done is I had made a little modification to this cone. I have cut a certain feature of this cone. I have cut a certain feature away and this feature is such that it allows this hexa hexagon of the prism to go very nicely into this cone ok with barely any effort <laughs> I am making some effort 
okay. All right. So, if you do not know how to do this or if you cannot do this, this is not possible for you. All right. So, this method permits you to figure out the intersection between the hexagon of the prism and the cone okay, and eventually figure out the part that needs to be cut away from the cone. So, that when you fold it up it is a lot easier for you to let this hexagon of the prism pass through this cone. Okay, something that you will be possibly doing in TA 201 and of course, this is the portion which is cut away from the cone. All right, another example. So, this time we have a rectangular uh, prism. Okay. Rectangular present passing through the cone. Once again, question number one. Which view will give you the right information about the intersection points? Profile view. Where would the intersection points lie? Where would the intersection points lie? They will lie on this edges or these edges. Yeah. So essentially the problem is to figure out the intersection between the slant edges of the cone slant edges that lie on the surface of the cone and these edges right. Same thing as in case of example number 1 previous example all right. So, this is your first intersection point it lies on this horizontal surface I am going to go a little fast all right. So, just just follow this ok. All right, so there are two intersection points over here. The second intersection point comes from here. The interaction between the generator five nine and this edge. Okay, correspondingly, there will be two intersection points on the front view. Okay, BC. The third one comes from here. Lies on six and eight. Okay, fourth one would come from here possibly. Yeah. That would lie on number seven and one. Seven and one would be at the center. Yeah. Right. So keep following this procedure. So H and I would lie on six eight and two twelve. J and K would lie on five nine three eleven, and eventually the bottom intersection point would lie on four and ten. What? All right. So if you think about this face of the prism, okay. If you think about this face of the prism, well, of course, there would be another intersection point that comes from here and here. Okay. Visibility. All right. So a part of it is outside. A part of the pyramid is outside the cone. Some part is inside. So some part is hidden. All right. Uh, this part is visible. This part of the cone is visible. And of course, this edge is visible. Now, if you think about this plane, what would this plane give you? So, this plane on the prism, what would this plane give you? Would give you ellipse. Yeah. What would this plane give you? It will give you a parabola. So, the top part is the elliptical part okay, and the bottom part is the parabolic part. Yeah. 
this plane should be parallel to the what? So, you, you what you are saying is this plane should be actually here somewhere? Oh, this will give you an ellipse. So, both are ellipses. Are you sure? What? It's a it's a half ellipse, all right. So you guys are not sleeping after all. Good. So this is okay. So all right. So project these guys up onto the respective slant lines on the cone be very careful with regard to where these intersection points are going to be ok. You can figure this thing out this is not this is not very difficult you can figure this thing out where the intersection points are going to be. Now, which part will be visible in the top view which part of the curve will be hidden in the top view which part of the intersection curve will be visible which part will be hidden would this part be visible would this part be visible no. So, everything from here up will be visible everything from here down will be hidden. Okay, so this part of the prism is visible that is hidden this is visible 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 that part of the base of the cone is hidden part of the base of the cone is hidden visible visible. So, the center part is going to be visible because yeah and the bottom part or the other part will be hidden. So, the part corresponding this this region over here that will be hidden ok. Once again if you uh, go back and if you work it out on AutoCAD this is what you would see. Coming back, <coughs> you know, I mess up my uh, coordinate geometry. So, a plane that is parallel to the base of the cone, if it cuts the cone, it will give you a circle, a slant plane will give you an ellipse, right. How do you get a parabola? One at a time. If it is all right. So, if it is parallel to the slant line anywhere you will get a parabola all right here you will get a hyperbola this one will give you a hyperbola right. So, it need not be vertical. So, a plane a plane need not be parallel to the axis of the cone to give you a hyperbola. So, it could as well be like so <laughs> till it is again parallel to the slant line that is that is when you will get a parabola. And of course, this will give you a what? This will give you an ellipse. All right. So, fix this. <coughs>